Now we will see uh, the working of uh, DC generator. According to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, whenever conductor is placed in a magnetic field, varying magnetic field, or conductor is moved in a magnetic field, an EMF gets induced in the conductor. So that you can observe here, there is a north and south poles in which conductor is placed and it is uh, moving. So conductor is moving, so they can observe here like this, we can move the conductor inside the magnetic field. So these uh, are the electromagnets, so it will produce continuous flux and uh, these are the conductors which are uh, turning or which are moving in between the poles. The magnitude of induced EMF can be calculated from the EMF equation of the generator. So if the conductor is provided with a closed path, so this is a conductor and it is um, connected with the commutator as well as brush segment and it is connected to the closed path. When conductor is connected to the closed path, the induced current will circulate within the path. So as I mentioned earlier, so there is a conductor, there is a commutator, there is a brushes and uh, through this brushes the current is allowed to flow through the external circuit or external load. So current start flowing when, when you provide a closed path. In a DC generator, field coils produced an electromagnetic field and the armature conductors are rotated into the field. So these are the armature conductors and field coils are placed in the poles. Thus an electromagnetically induced EMF is generated in the armature conductors. So for the information, you can refer this link. So that will um, give the pictorial representation of uh, DC generation. So here, once again, I will repeat, uh, these are the armature conductors which are placed in between poles and when it is rotated within the poles, which are continuously producing flux like this, when the armature is rotated, it will cut the flux, EMF will be induced in the armature conductors. When EMF is induced in the armature conductors and if you provide a closed path for this uh, EMF induced, it will start circulating current in the circuit and uh, these are the commutators, these are the brushes. So this brush will take the current to the external circuit. So initially uh, the whatever voltage or current which is produced is of AC due to this uh, by using this commuter segment. This bidirectional voltage or current it will convert into unidirectional current that is DC. So that will be supplied at the end to the external load. Thus we will we'll get the DC current or voltage. This is the working principle of a DC generator. Next very important topic is EMF equation of a DC generator. Consider DC generator with the following parameters. P number of field poles. Phi flux produced per pole in Weber's. Z is the total number of armature conductors present. A number of parallel path in armature. Each parallel path and there is a specific armature conductor supplied. So this A is equal to number of parallel paths provided. N is the rotational speed of the armature in RPM, a revolution per minute. Now, average EMF generated per conductor. In one conductor, how much average EMF it has been generated? It is given by d phi by dt, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, flux cut rate of change of flux with respect to time d phi by dt that we already came across average emf generated per conductor flux cut by one conductor in one revolution so when conductor is rotating so this flux cut by one conductor in one revolution so this has to undergo how many number of poles are present that much number of poles in one revolution one conductor has to undergo. So d phi is a flux cut by a one conductor. A small amount of flux is given by total flux into number of poles because this has to this conductor has to undergo 
the total number of poles so it is p into 5 so d5 is equal to p into 5 number of revolutions per second so n is equal to rpm n by 60 will give rps revolution per second converting minutes into seconds therefore time for one revolution dt so dt 60 by n seconds that will get as 60 by n seconds so we have got now d5 we have got now dt so now we will do d5 by dt so when you do d5 by dt you will get p phi n by 60 volts so now equation number 2 gives the emf generated in one conductor so because we are considering only one conductor here so per conductor so emf induced one conductor of the generator the conductors are connected in series with per parallel path so that i told earlier so if there are provided n number of i mean a number of parallel path all conductors are placed in a parallel paths and the emf across the generator terminals is equal to generated emf across any parallel path so for that reason so p phi n z by 60 a so you have to divide by a total number of parallel path so n z z number of conductors are present in a parallel path so how many parallel paths are provided in that much parallel path this z number of conductors are present so this average emf induced or total number of emf induced can be calculated as phi z np by 60a for simplex lap winding number of parallel path is equal to number of poles that is a is equal to p for lap winding there are two types of winding that will come it will come later one is lap winding second, second one is wave winding if you consider the winding as lap winding then a is equal to p number of parallel path is equal to number of poles so p phi n z by 60 <coughs> p so we can replace a by p because a is equal to p so p p will get cancelled here so only remaining is e g generated emf is equal to phi n z by 60 for wave winding p is equal to 2 or number of parallel path is equal to 2 so number of parallel path is equal to 2 so that means to say a is equal to 2 here or here p is equal to 2 or here a is equal to 2 so what you get is phi z np by 120 so that is very important that you have to remember for lap winding what is the formula for generated emf for wave winding what is the formula for wave winding next types of dc generators in the dc generator the it converts the mechanical power into electrical power the magnetic flux in the dc machine is produced by the field coils carrying current so that already came across that field windings are bound for the poles when current is start flowing in the field winding it will produce a, a current which magnetizes the poles so for that reason we can tell this exciting windings or field windings are responsible for the production of flux or exciting the poles the circulating current in the field windings produces a magnetic flux and this phenomenon is called as excitation in this generator is satisfied according to the methods of this field excitation one is separately excited dc generator next one is self excited dc generators now we will see one by one what is meant by separately excited in separately excited dc generators the field windings are excited or they are given supply from the external source if field windings are given supply from the external source or excited by the external source then that kind of dc generator are called as separately excited dc generators so one thing i would like to tell even if the dc generator to produce dc voltage 
initially some excitement or some exciting current or a exciting voltage exciting supply it has to be given for the field windings first from either external source or the same source the dc generators whose field winding or coil is energized by a separate or external dc source is called separately excited dc generator the flux produced by the poles depends upon the field current with the unsaturated region of magnetic material of the poles that is flux is directly proportional to the field current so that mean to say since the field windings are responsible for the production of flux this flux is directly proportional to the field current if so if you take if as a field current so this flux is directly proportional to the current so once the flux has been produced it has, it will increase as the current increases it will increase but one stage it will reaches its saturation after that flux remains constant okay so this is called a separately excited dc generator so these are the field windings which are excited or which are given supply externally which is nothing to do with this uh, generator only these field windings are used to energize <coughs> this will energize the poles of this generator so that uh, this is the generator here uh, it is it has to be eg is not eb it is eg so um, the generated emf eg and this is armature resistance which is now shown is internal resistance it is internally present armature resistance ra so this is ia armature current whenever current produced by the this generator so this will go like this from the machine from the generator it will go ia it will go to the load when load has been connected so it will go to the load here ia and il are same here ia is equal to il where ia is armature current il is a line current but both are same here the terminal voltage the voltage which is available at the terminal it is called as a terminal voltage v is given by so this is eg uh, it should be eg not eb eb is in the case of motor is a back emf it will come later eg is a generated emf in the case of generator eg minus iare so there is a drop wherever there is a resistance there is a voltage drop so since re in internal resistance of armature is present there is a drop voltage drop so this whatever emf generated minus iare the voltage iare it will available at the terminal so terminal voltage is equal to eg generated emf minus iare that will be available at the terminal so if since once again if we go deep and if it consider the brush contact drop so once again the brushes so there is a drop in the brushes when current is passing through the brushes there is a drop in the brushes if you consider brush contact drop once again the voltage available at the terminal it will be reduced a minimum there will be two brushes 2 into vb voltage across brushes voltage across brush so total voltage available at the terminal it will be generated emf minus some voltage drop in the armature minus the voltage drop in the brushes the power developed and power output is given by the equation below so power developed so always uh, power is developing in the armature the power is developing in the armature so eg into ia is a generated emf into armature current so eg into ia the power is developed in the armature the power output so every everywhere in generator whatever the power output is at the load side so terminal voltage into load current so i can write v into il is a power output so here il and ia is same so since i can write v into il or v into ia so next self excited dc generator so 
here what you observed is separately excited now we'll move on to self excited dc generator self excited dc generator is a device in which the current to the field winding is supplied by the generator itself so that is very important thing uh, when the field windings are energized uh, by the current which is produced by the generator itself it is called self excited dc generator in self excited dc generator the field coils may be connected in parallel with the armature or in series with the armature or it may be connected partly in series and partly in parallel so depending upon that it is called as a shunt worm generator series form generator and compound worm generator when field windings are connected in parallel with the armature it is called as shunt worm generator so uh, that we can observe here in a shunt fault generator the field wind is connected across that is parallel to the armature winding forming a parallel or shunt circuit so that you can observe here so field windings are energized by the current which is produced by the generator itself and it is connected in parallel with the armature winding therefore full terminal voltage is applied across it full terminal voltage it is very parallel to the shunt field winding so this terminal voltage is parallel dead parallel to the shunt field winding so a very therefore full terminal voltage is applied across it a very small field current ish flows through it because this winding has many turns of fine wire having very high resistance in order of 100 ohms so what is meant by this is um, in a shunt wound generators very small amount of current is flowing through the shunt field and most of the current is flowing through the armature winding and loop because the shunt field resistance it is made up of very high resistance of very high number of turns so very small amount of current is flowing its value is very high resistance value is very high small amount of current is flowing and most of the current is flowing through load as well as armature so ish is equal to v by rsh that you can see the current flowing through the shunt field resistance is uh, i can formulate as v by rsh because uh, this and this are parallel so v by rsh will give ish the current ish is practically constant at all loads so armature current ia uh, it will be divided into two one is ish one is il so that can observe here so i can write ia is equal to il plus ish once again uh, here it has to be eg not eb generated emf and small armature resistance is present internally which is not shown here but internally armature resistance is present so terminal voltage v is equal to generated emf eg minus ira so just like a previous case it is minus ia into ra wherever there is a resistance armature resistance there is a drop so v minus ira so this will not come into picture the drop across this r shunt is not coming to picture because it is same as v same as v so when wherever there is a series voltage drop it will count so v is equal to eg minus ira so v is equal to eg minus ira minus 2 vb if you are considering the brush contact drop if we consider the brush contact drop if brush contact drop is included the equation become minus 2 vb so v is equal to eg minus ira minus 2 vb once again power developed is equal to eg into ia the power is always developed in the armature eg into armature current ia but here unlike in the last case ia is equal to il plus ish but the last case this ia and uh, il are same but here ia and il are not same since shunt field current is present and this shunt field winding is part of this uh, particular generator so ia is equal to il plus ish here power output is equal to v into il as always output is taken in the load side v into il the power output next we pass on to series bound generator 
series mount generator a series mount generator the field coils are connected in series with the armature winding the series field winding carries the armature current the series field winding consists of a few turns of wire of thick wire of larger cross sectional area had having low resistance usually in the order of less than 1 ohm so this we can observe here so this is a series field it is connected in series with the armature which has got very low resistance isc ia il so all currents are same here since series field bindings are in series with armature and load is also in series with the armature as well as uh, series field only one current is present only one circuit only one current is present so rsc or ia uh, rsc is present il or ia or isc i can call so only one current so if you calculate the terminal voltage v the voltage which is available at the terminal so one dot drops so that you can calculate one is generated emf definitely v generated emf from this iara drop will be there there is a small armature resistance there is a drop when current is flowing through that resistance always there is a drop once again but extra drop here is rsc so is into rsc so i can write uh, since ia and uh, isc are same i can take ia outside as eg minus ia into ra plus rsc if we consider once again the brush contact drop so there is a drop or losses voltage drop at the brushes minimum two brushes will be present so i can add this voltage drop also so eg minus ia into ra plus rsc minus 2 will be power developed in the armature always eg into ia and power output v into ia but here ia is equal to il is equal to isc next compound one generator in a compound one generator there are two field windings one is connected in series and another is connected in parallel so these are the example of a compound one generator here both shunt as well as series field windings are present once again there are two types one is a long shunt compound one second one is short shunt compound one now what is meant by long shunt compound one in a long shunt compound one generator shunt field winding is parallel with both armature and series field see here you can observe here shunt field which are parallel with the armature as well as series field so armature and series field definitely they are in series and this shunt field winding is parallel to both here the shunt field current is given by v by rsh definitely because uh, this shunt field is parallel with this load this shunt field is parallel with this load so we can calculate this rsh as v by rsh we can calculate ish as v by rsh series field current is is equal to ia series field current is ia are same but not il it is not equal to il because uh, current will be splitting here so i can call isc is equal to ia that is equal to il plus ish il plus ish terminal voltage if you calculate the terminal voltage here so this is a power developed in the armature eg or generated emf eg minus ira ira voltage drop in the armature minus once again there is a drop in the series field wherever there is a resistance in which current is passing there is a voltage drop i told earlier earlier so eg is equal to ira minus ia is into rsc so this will not count because it is not in series with this line so it is not in series with this line so eg minus ira minus is into rsc so isc and ia are same i can write like this if brush contact drop is included once again we can add minus 2 will be here so power developed eg into ia power developed in the armature so it is not once again eb it is eg and power output is equal to v into il in a short shunt compound one generators in short shunt compound one generator the shunt field winding is connected in parallel with armature winding only 
so we can see here the shunt field winding is connected in parallel with the armature winding it is not in parallel with series field winding series field winding is in series with the load that is one difference that you can observe so here is is equal to il here series field current that we can call it as same as the load because this series field winding is in series with the load current passing through the series field winding and load are same but it is not same as armature current shunt field current is given as ish here shunt field current is given as ish is equal to v plus il rsc by rsh so there is is eg minus ia ra by rsh eg minus ira by rsh or ia is equal to il plus ish terminal voltage eg minus ira minus il into rsc or minus is into rsc or minus il into rsc because these are coming in series and uh, this is not coming to picture if brush contact drop has been included definitely minus 2 will be will be included and power developed as same as before eg into ia and power output output power is always at the terminals low terminals v into il so this is the classification total classification of these generators so that we can observe here classification of these machines a separate like that self excited series phone chun phone compound one and long chain and short chain next two types of uh, windings here one is lap winding in lap winding the conductors are joined in such a way that their parallel paths and poles are equal in number so this is the lap winding and wave winding which are present in armature conductor types of armature conductor winding so these are joined in such a way that their parallel paths and poles are equal in number so in lap winding as i told earlier in the emf equation for generator the parallel path and number of poles are equal the end of each armature coil is connected to the adjacent segment of the commutator so this is one armature coil so this uh, this is one armature coil so this is a commutators so this is the another armature coil so we can observe in the diagram so each end of the armature coil other end of the armature is coil is connected to the adjacent commutator segment so we started here commutator segment number 1 it is went like this and other end of the coil is connected to second commuter segment once again same thing the second coil it is started with the second commuter segment and end in third commuter segment the number of brushes in the lap winding is equal to number of parallel paths and these brushes are equally divided into negative and positive polarity the lap winding is mainly used for low voltage high current machines and uh, three types simplex duplex and triplex lap windings next comes the wave winding in wave winding only two parallel paths are provided between the positive and negative brushes here only two parallel paths in all in all conductors are placed in these two parallel paths only in respect of the number of conductors present only two parallel paths are present in wave winding the finishing end of one armature coil is connected to the starting end of the other armature coil commuter segment at same distance apart so that you can see here the starting end is connected to the finishing end and from here only and the coil has started and it is ended here once again the third coil will start from here only the finishing end of one armature coil is connected to the starting end of the other armature coil so there is a meaning of this in this winding the conductors are connected in two parallel paths irrespective of the number of poles of the machine the number of brushes is equal to number of parallel paths the wave winding is mainly used in high voltage low current brushes so this is a comparison or i can say the difference of uh, lap and wave winding one is if you compare the definition the coil is uh, lapped back to the succeeding coil here the wave winding the coil of winding from form a wave shape so that you can observe in the diagram of uh, lap and wave winding connection 
the end of the armature coil is connected to an adjacent segment on the commutators in the left winding but in the wave winding it is connected to the commutator segment some distance apart so that you can observe here so commutator segment some distance apart parallel path the number of parallel paths are equal to the total number of poles but in the wave winding only two parallel paths are present other name for lap winding is a multiple winding and here is called as a two circuit or series winding emf uh, definitely it is very less here wave winding emf uh, produces more here number of brush equal to the number of parallel paths here only two brushes are present here simplex and duplex lap winding separated here progressive or retrogressive wave winding is present efficiency lap winding is less wave winding is high its winding cost is high in lap winding because more conductors are required because it is taking the shape of lap one overlapping the other but here wave winding winding cost is low when compared to lap winding uses as i mentioned earlier it is used for low voltage high current machines and wave winding is used for high voltage low current machines